can I use Ephesians 5 to beat my wife? Ephesians 5 is one of those texts that shows up at many weddings, as is appropriate. Ephesians 5 talks about the roles of husbands and wives in, in, in a relationship, in a marriage. This isn't just Paul making up things because he's a zealot and he's a woman-hating, uh, anti-woman, you know, anti uh, patriarchal misogynist. This is Paul explaining marriage as instituted by God. If you go back to the Garden of Eden, God created Adam as a singular human being. Then he took Eve from the side of Adam and created her and gave her back to Adam, and that's marriage. The flesh was separated into two people and was reunited into a singular family unit. And Adam ended up with a better deal than when he had all of his ribs. Now, this goes forward, and, and God teaches about marriage, and Paul explains this to us, well, God explains it to us through the pen of Paul, that marriage marriage is a cooperation. Marriage is, is, is a combination of these two different people in two different roles, both contributing to the same goal. Neither person is worth more than the other. Neither person is more valued than the other. Without the other, the marriage dies. You can't have a marriage without a husband. You can't have a marriage without a wife. Both are essential components to the marriage. It's like having a person missing a head versus having a person missing a body. Again, this is the language that Paul uses, the head and the body. There's an interesting phrase I heard recently to describe marriage. A, a hierarchy of equals. A hierarchy of equals. So in terms of salvation, both men and women are equal. God died for, for man and woman. Men and women have equal value. That being said, men are different from women. In the beginning, God created them. He created them male and female, period. And because they're different, they're given different roles, different responsibilities. The wife is given the responsibility of supporting and submitting to her husband. But the husband is given even more responsibility as he has more authority. The husband is told to love his wife and to sacrifice for his wife, even up to dying for his wife, to take care of his wife as his own body. So people who look at this verse in Ephesians 5, take it out of context and say, well, this is just devaluing women. This is devaluing the wife. Eh, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm sorry. Having a different role doesn't mean that you necessarily have a different value. Yes, wives submit to your husband, but not wives are, are, are lesser, than, lesser in value than their husbands are. At the same time, there are those who would look at this verse and try to twist it, and again, take it out of context, and say, well, this says why my wife is supposed to submit to me. Wives submit to your husbands. Husbands do whatever you want. Shocker, that's not a verse in the Bible. God doesn't say, do whatever you want, husbands. He says, wives, submit to your husbands as, you, you know, as to the Lord. And husbands, guess what? Here is what you do. You get to be like Christ. This is the comparison. In fact, this is what marriage represents. Christ in the church doesn't represent marriage, but the other way around. Husbands and wives, the, lo the love of a husband for a wife and the wife for a husband. A wife submitting to the husband and the husband sacrificing for the, for the wife. That's a picture of Christ in the church. The husband is not just supposed to be somebody who, who submits to another authority and follows, but is supposed to be Christ. And which do you think is harder at the end of the day? Having the burden of being like the Christian church and having somebody who saves you and follows you and washes away your sin? Or having the burden of being Christ, of being sacrificial, of being loving and selfless? This is, it just baffles the mind when I hear people look at this verse and say, well, this is such a hateful verse towards women. Whether their perspective is it devalues women, which it doesn't, or their perspective is this means men can do whatever they want to women, which again, it doesn't. If your belief from reading this verse is husbands, 
use Ephesians 5 and freely abuse and beat your wives, then you're wrong. You are wrong. You are incorrect. Continue reading the Bible. It is clear that you are wrong. We should obey God's prescription for marriage, not just in the components that it is a man and a woman, but also in the behavior of of submission and sacrifice. God knows best. He knows how marriages ought best to work. He modeled marriages after the perfect relationship between Christ and the church. We shouldn't try to overrule, overrule God's rules for marriage, how we ought to behave in marriage. Ephesians 5 is not a, it's not a section, a chapter of abuse and tyranny. It's a chapter of love and service, submission and sacrifice. It describes the dance of marriage where one person leads and the other follows, but both are swept beautifully across the ballroom floor, only stepping on each other's toes now and then. Even more so when they both struggle for control, and even more so when they both refuse to lead, and both are submissive and and, and passive in the marriage. Follow God's command for marriage. If you are a wife, submit to your husband. Help him to be like Christ. If you are a husband, sacrifice for your wife. Treat her like Christ treats the Christian church. This this is a command for you, but it is also a blessing for you. And that's what marriage is. It's a blessing. It's not just a blessing on this earth, but it's a foretaste of the blessing of eternity. Through marriage, we get a glimpse, a small look into what it means when God loves his Christians, when God so loved the world that he would send his only son to die for Christians. When we have a marriage and we strive to love our partners in that marriage, our spouse in that marriage like that, we get the blessing of being able to Just see a little bit what God means when he says, I love you. (laughs) Now, as always, this text is about Christ and what Christ did for you. This is why it's important. It's not just a handy guide for how to have a perfect marriage. You're not going to have a perfect marriage. There's going to be things that are going to be wrong. You're going to have to learn how to say, I forgive you in marriage. In fact, if you want to say, I love you, you first have to say, I forgive you. If you can't forgive, then you cannot love. Husbands and wives, forgive each other. Love one another. Wives, submit to your husbands as as to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Sacrifice for her as Christ loved the church. Loves the church. And ultimately, both of you remember that Christ loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins. He washed you of your sins in baptism. He placed his name on you in baptism and promises salvation to those who remain in his family and in that marriage. Thanks be to God. God bless you guys and take care.